Tova Sullivan prepares for battle. A yellow rubber glove sticks up from her back pocket like a canary's plume as she bends over to size up her enemy. Chewing gum. For heaven's sake. She jabs at the pinkish blob with her mop handle. Layers of sneaker tread emboss its surface, speckling it with grime. Tova has never understood the purpose of chewing gum. And people lose track of it so often. Perhaps this chewer was talking ceaselessly, and it simply tumbled out, swept away by a slurry of superfluous words. She bends over and picks at the edge of the mess with her fingernail, but it doesn't budge from the tile. All because someone couldn't walk ten feet to the trash bin. Once, when Eric was young, Tova caught him mashing a piece of bubblegum under a diner table. That was the last time she bought bubblegum for him, although how he spent his allowance as adolescence set in was, like so much else, beyond her control. Specialized weaponry will be necessary. A file, perhaps. Nothing on her cart will pry up the gum. As she stands, her back pops. The sound echoes down the empty curve of the hallway, bathed in its usual soft blue light, as she journeys to the supply closet. No one would fault her, of course, for passing over the blob of gum with her mop. At 70 years old, they don't expect her to do such deep cleaning. But she must at least try. Besides, it's something to do. Tova is Sowell Bay Aquarium's oldest employee. Each night, she mops the floors, wipes down the glass, and empties the trash bins. Every two weeks, she retrieves a direct deposit stub from her cubby in the break room. $14 an hour, less the requisite taxes and deductions. The stubs get stashed in an old shoebox on top of her refrigerator, unopened. The funds accrue in an out-of-mind account at the Seoul Bay Savings and Loan. She marches toward the supply closet now, at a purposeful clip that would be impressive by anyone's standards, but is downright astonishing for a tiny older woman with a curved back and bird-like bones. Overhead, raindrops land on the skylight, backlit by glare from the security light at the old ferry dock next door. Silver droplets race down the glass, shimmering ribbons under the fog-bound sky. It's been a dreadful June, as everyone keeps saying. The gray weather doesn't bother Tova, though it would be nice if the rain would let up long enough to dry out her front yard. Her push mower clogs when it's soggy. Shaped like a donut, with a main tank in the center and smaller tanks around the outside, the aquarium's dome-topped building is not particularly large or impressive, perhaps fitting for Sowell Bay, which is neither large nor impressive itself. From the site of Tova's encounter with the chewing gum, the supply closet is a full diameter across. Her white sneakers squeak across a section she's already cleaned, leaving dull footprints on the gleaming tile. Without a doubt, she'll mop that part again. She pauses at the shallow alcove with its life-sized bronze statue of a Pacific sea lion. The sleek spots on its back and bald head worn smooth from decades of being petted and climbed on by children, only enhance its realism. On Tova's mantle at home, there's a photo of Eric, perhaps 11 or 12 at the time, grinning wildly as he straddles the statue's back, one hand aloft like he's about to throw a lasso. A sea cowboy. That photo is one of the last in which he looks childlike and carefree. Tova maintains the photos of Eric in chronological order, a montage of his transformation from a gummy-grinned baby to handsome teenager, taller than his father, posing in his letter jacket, pinning a corsage on a homecoming date, atop a makeshift podium on the rocky shores of deep blue Puget Sound, clutching a high school regatta trophy. Tova touches the sea lion's cold head as she passes, quelling the urge to wonder yet again how Eric might have looked now. She continues on, as one must, down the dim hallway. In front of the tank of bluegills, she pauses. Good evening, dears. The Japanese crabs are next. Hello, lovelies. How do you do? She inquires of the sharp-nosed sculpin. The wolf eels are not Toba's cup of tea, but she nods a greeting. One mustn't be rude.